everybody, and welcome to Florida Friendly Landscaping Community Connections. In today's installment of Community Connections, I have invited a coworker of mine and a good friend of mine, uh, Mr. Carmen Bruno, who works for Hernando County Solid Waste um, at our Hernando County Landfill. Good morning or good afternoon, Carmen. Hey, Lily, how are you doing today? We're doing just great. I am Lily Browning. I am the Florida Friendly Landscaping Program Coordinator for Hernando County Utilities. I work in water conservation. If you have any questions for me, please don't hesitate to email me at lilyb, L-I-L-L-Y-B, at hernandocounty.us. As I mentioned, today's guest, is Carmen Bruno, and he is the Hernando County Recycling Coordinator here at um, Hernando County Solid Waste. He is headquartered at the Hernando County Landfill, which he tells me regularly is not the dump. We don't call it that at all. And we're gonna learn about his job as a recycling coordinator and about all the interesting things that are going on in solid waste here in our county. Carmen is also the chairman of Florida Recycling Today. Is that what it's called, Carmen? Very closely. I'm the chairperson for Recycle Florida Today, which is the state recycling group. Uh, we represent public sector, private sector, and nonprofit folk. Uh, we're about, about 200 members right now. And uh, our primary focus is recycling, the recycling industry, education, and, and all that sort of stuff. So it's, it's a huge uh, honor to be head of that group because there are really a lot of fantastic people involved in it. Yes, and I know you'll do a great job at it because I, I heard you speak of the group quite often um, with a lot of passion and interest. So, and speaking of passion and interest, <laughs> How our um, job, job um, responsibilities intersect, actually they intersect quite often. Recycling is one of the principles of nine, of one of the nine principles of Florida friendly landscaping. And what we do quite often, in fact, once a month recently, is we have a combined rain barrel and compost bin workshop. They've been held virtually, um, been going on for about eight months or so now in a virtual um, format, so in the evenings, so that um, working folks also can participate. And then there's a pickup day following you know, that virtual workshop. So as far as composting goes, the Hernando County um, Solid Waste Division does provide a free composter for citizens, residents of Hernando County. You do have to be a Hernando County resident. You only receive one per household. But Carmen, why don't you tell us um, why, what are the benefits of composting for the homeowner? Well, one of, the, one of the biggest things is you get to keep a resource that you have at home, in your home or around your home. So when we talk about backyard composting and we talk about the program that you and I do, we're talking about what's called cold composting. It's a mixture of brown and green, green ingredients, carbon and nitrogen, and it's gonna break down, it happens naturally, and you're gonna wind up with a really high quality plant food basically. So if you dig around anywhere, for the most part in Hernando County, you're either gonna come up with a lot of clay or a lot of sand. Neither one of those soil types have a lot of nutrient in them to grow things, whether it's grass, vegetables, flowering plants, whatever the case may be. So by having a backyard composter, you're gonna generate an amount, and, and relatively speaking, it's not a lot, but you're gonna generate some of this compost material that you can use. Um, some of the suggestions that I've heard was as seed starter, you can use it in your flower beds or as you transplant flowers and things like that. So instead of putting 
uh, these brown and green in ingredients into the trash and it coming to me here at the landfill, you're going to keep them on your own property and use them yourself. So some of the examples of those browns and greens, we're talking for the browns, we're talking sticks and twigs. For the greens, we're talking the vegetable peels, uh, fruit peelings, cleaning fruit and vegetables, things like that. We're going to stay away from fats, oils, and greases. But think about how often you have a nice big salad at home. Or, you know, this time of year, we're always having watermelon at home or cantaloupe. You can put those things into your compost bin and they'll break down. And you're developing your own plant food. You're going to help increase the little uh, ecosystem for your plants. And the really neat thing about composting, whether you do it on a small scale, like we're talking about in your backyard, or you do it on an industrial setting, is the nutrients are a little easierly, a little a quick, yeah, excuse me. The nutrients are of a, of a quicker quality for the plants to absorb because it is, they were plants. So one of the big benefits or some of the benefits are you're sending less stuff to the landfill so you're not filling up your trash can you're saving that that resource to use around your home so you know you you pointed out we cross paths a lot in what we do because we talk about sustainability so composting gets the sustainability and then the other thing is who doesn't like having you know green shrubbery or some nice flowering plants in a window box, or maybe a small container garden to where you can have a salad of fresh tomatoes or things like that. So those are really the benefits for it, less to the landfill, and then you see the benefits right in your yard. Okay, so now that you have touted all of that, um, we, we kind of touched on it, but if someone is interested in a free compost bin, how, how do they get one? So the easiest way to do that right now, and I think our partnership has worked really, really well, mm -hmm. is to look for our monthly virtual class. You have to attend the whole class. If all you want is the compost bin, you're only gonna have to attend the compost portion. It's about 45 minutes to an hour long. Um, you've been gracious enough to give it a couple of times. Nice. Dr. Bill Lester from the extension office can give it, and of course, I'm always willing to, to give the class. We give you some really good basic information about composting, some good resources to use. Once you've done that, if we're talking the virtual event, you'll come in the next day or a couple of days later, maybe on a Saturday, and you'll pick up your compost bin and you're ready to start. Um, once we get through some of the ever-changing uh, pandemic conditions we're in, we do occasionally offer classes here at the main landfill, and that gives people an opportunity to take the class and get the compost bin in the same day. And it also gives our residents the opportunity to come see the resource that we have here at the main landfill. Got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, we're working right now with our public information office to put out a video series, a short video series, about all the different things we do. And, and you know, we sat down in a brainstorming session and, and we put the list together. And when we went out and started, filming some of the sessions, the question came up, well, what about that over there? Okay, well, let's go talk about that. And then, oh, what about that over there? So we're, we're hoping to get that rolled out here in about the next six weeks. And that'll be another way to see what's going on. But I always encourage people, if you get the opportunity, you've never been here, come out and see us. Okay, that sounds great. So speaking of composting, we're still on, on the subject of composting. I am aware that um, you are researching, reviewing, um, experimenting with a large scale composting project at our Hernando County landfill. Can you expand upon what, what that is all about? Absolutely. So the Board of County Commissioners has approved a project. Um, it's about a $2 million project, a little bit more going to be on about 11 acres of land here at our main landfill and we're going to take the yard waste that's either collected by our partners at Republic Services or that people bring here to the landfill. 
We're going to grind it up and we're going to mix it with wastewater sludge. Now that's the byproduct that comes from domestic wastewater treatment. Our, our utilities director, uh, your big boss and my big boss, Gordon Underdunk, taught me something a couple of months ago, and I, I really enjoy sharing this with, with folks, because when you talk about wastewater sludge, everybody goes, oh, that's, oh, that's poop. Oh, that's, that's horrible. And it's actually not. It's the skeleton of the bugs that eat the wastewater material. And when they die off, that's what we're composting. So that's what's in the sludge, okay? Now, the state of Florida has to give us a permit. We're working on that right now. We, we've received a permit provisional okay. We just have to do a couple of things here at the landfill before we can start building. So I hope within about the next two years, we'll have a large project going where we'll compost about 12 to 15,000 tons a year of yard waste and about six or 7,000 tons a year of sludge. And we'll turn it into what's called a double A compost. The material will be tested to make sure that it doesn't have anything bad in it like E. coli or salmonella. Once we get the clear from the Department of Environmental Protection here in the state of Florida that we can offer it for sale, we will. And, and those benefits that we talked about with the backyard composting program, you'll get from this. The nice thing about this program is you'll be able to buy this. Um, we're tentatively scheduled or slated to sell it in 40 pound bags and then by the cubic yard. So if you had a pickup truck and you wanted to come get three cubic yards of it, we could load it right into the back of the pickup truck. If you had a trailer, so on and so forth. So we're, we're talking about the same process. We're talking about mixing materials, getting some temperatures right, because we're going to do hot composting. We're going to monitor it. We're going to turn it. We're going to screen it. We're going to test it. And then we're going to offer it for sale. The 11 acre piece of property that we're talking about doing that we already own, it's here at the Northwest Landfill, also has a future area in it where we'd like to do some direct food composting. So maybe some pre-consumer food stuff. We'll bring that up here, find a way to, to collect it economically, and then we'll mix that into our compost. So we've got big plans for the area. We're moving forward with it. Again, I'm hoping we should have material uh, ready to go to the public in about two years, and I'll make sure that I keep the master gardeners and, of course, Florida Friendly Landscaping involved in it and keep you all up to date with what's going on because um, our our neighbors to the south in Hillsborough County and down in Lee County, they're doing a similar program. So you'll wind up getting the benefits of your backyard compost material, only now you're going to get it on a larger scale. So um, I'll keep the Master Gardeners and, of course, Florida Friendly Landscaping up, Public Information Office. And as soon as we have, uh, material ready we'll make sure we let everybody know i'm looking very much forward to it so um you mentioned already some of the potential uses for the material that you that you're going to provide if if it's all available and i want to go with my truck to get those three cubic yards that you mentioned what am i going to do with it once i have it so it all depends on what your needs are so when you look around your property Again, here in, in Hernando County, a lot, of our, a lot of our homes sit on sand ridges, so we don't retain water. So the first thing you can use this material for is just getting some organics into your soil. If you're getting ready to build a house when our program is up and running, then I encourage everyone to go ahead and get a couple of yards of this material mixed per acre into where you're going to build and that's going to help your sod take off you're already an existing home um, one of the things my wife and i are doing is we're trying to you know beef up our lawn a little bit make it look like um, it's grass instead of just a green yard so you can top dress your yard with it you can actually take this material and broadcast spread it like you would with fertilizer and remember we're talking micronutrients here 
So even though we don't call it a fertilizer, it acts just like a fertilizer. So you can top dress your lawns with it. If you're going to put new landscaping in, let's say you, you take one of Lily's classes, one of your classes, and uh, I want to go ahead and plant some uh, Florida friendly landscaping. This is a great thing to put in as you're planting those things, okay? And then if I want to start my own seeds or my own vegetable garden, again, it'll be a great seed starter. When you blend it with your soil, it will do nothing but help your vegetable garden. University of Florida has done a lot of research with compost. And what they're finding is uh, there's actually a citrus, an orange disease called citrus greening. And it almost wiped out the, the citrus industry here in Florida. And what they're finding is by putting compost around the base of uh, citrus or orange trees, the trees still bear fruit that's green, but it's large enough now to juice again. And the juice is orange and flavorful and sweet. So we're able to bring those trees back that would only be burned because you know, citrus greening is not something that's going to kill the tree, but it's like a chronic ailment. The trees are going to continue to go through their cycle and flower and fruit, but they're little green golf balls instead of large oranges. So um, lots of good things to be done with compost around your yard. If you've got a small uh, vegetable garden or a small commercial operation, we have a lot of truck farms in our county. Um, great for that. Pasture land, same as your yard. Top dress your pastures with it. Uh, golf courses, sports fields. Um, we're we're going to tout it all over the place. It's it's a product that you can use. It just depends on how green your thumb is. Maybe you only want a forty pound bag because you're you're just going to plant some new landscaping, or maybe you want forty yards of it to have somebody come bring it out to you. Yes, I think it's going to be um, a great benefit um, to everyone's yards and, like you said, fields, pastures, all of that. It is not a fertilizer. It is not um, specially formulated in any way to be a fertilizer, but it does assist our sandy soil in holding on to its water holding, as you mentioned, and nutrient holding abilities. It really benefits um, the capacity of our soil to do that. And we have, you're right, the University of Florida has been doing research in um, new homes before they get sod put down, they put this in, they till it in um, with the fill dirt and they have much better success at establishing a new lawn. And if you're beyond that point, using it as a top dressing, broadcast spraying it uh, once a year or so is also extremely beneficial. So, if I were to hop in my car and take a drive up to the Hernando County landfill, first we should probably um, differentiate. There is one landfill in Hernando County, correct? And there is there one are, active landfill. There and there are two are. transfer stations. A lot of residents get those two confused. So before you answer this question, tell us the difference between the landfill and the, uh, the two transfer stations. So I'm, I'm going to put my, my garbage hat on because I'm also a certified landfill operator and, and I do some training in the industry. So um, in Hernando County, Hernando County Board of County Commissioners operates what's called a class one landfill. That's where all of our municipal solid waste is going to go. Now that's a mouthful of stuff and people are going, What's he talking about? So the Board of County Commissioners operates a landfill where you can throw away household and commercial trash, things that come out of kitchens, businesses, and things like that. We've recently shut down our C&D landfill, construction and demolition debris landfill. It's, it's been filled to capacity, and the cost in building another one are uh, cost limiting, they're not economically viable for us. So we've gotten out of that business, but there is a private c and landfill in the county owned by one of the local construction companies. Uh, and it's uh, located in the central part of the county. So our, county, our landfill, run by the Board of County Commissioners is for 
municipal solid waste. Again, comes from businesses, commercial entities, restaurants, that sort of thing, okay? The other things that we do here, we also operate two convenience centers or transfer stations, you had mentioned that. So there's one in Spring Hill and one in Ridge Manor. And they collect from residents, household trash, yard waste, scrap metal, and some hazardous waste. Why do we do that? It's easier for the residents in Ridge Manor or even some of the folks that are in the southwest corner of the county in Spring Hill. It's easier for them to get to the transfer station, drop off what they need, and then we move it on a large scale here to our main landfill and either process the material or bury it, whatever needs to be done to it. So those are our convenience centers. When we talk about the activities uh, here at the main landfill, of course, all of our recycling from our curbside recycling program comes here. All of our yard waste is going to eventually wind up here if it's not delivered here directly. We have a household hazardous waste drop off and the main landfill. What you're gonna find when you first come up here you're gonna find a scale house. You stop at the scale house, the folks that work in there will give you directions according to what you bring to us. If you use one of the two convenience centers, there's someone at their gate that's gonna go ahead and give you directions. Now, the wonderful thing about most of the folks that visit us is they've done it many, many times. So they pretty much just come in and say, hey, how are you doing? And they're on their own. Um, the other thing that you're going to find, and you have a great picture, uh, Lily, I'm glad you shared the backstory with me, that it came from uh, the Audubon Society, and they actually came out here not that long ago, this past winter, for a tour, and even with COVID, we did it in cars, and we caravaned, and we didn't get together in a big group, but those are actually two eagles that were here this winter in our main landfill, and what we find is during the summer, We'll have two, three, maybe four eagles. And you know, typically during the day, you'll spot one of them. But as we get into the colder weather, eagles are actually snowbirds. They actually migrate from up north. They come down here the end of January, February, maybe to the end of February that month in there. You can see up to uh, 18 to 20 bald eagles, either adolescents or adults here at our main landfill. We also have woodstocks. Uh, wood storks, excuse me, wood storks, wood storks. Um, we have sandhill cranes. We have a, a number of different species of gulls. Uh, uh, several years ago, we had a gull from Canada that had come down here for the winter. So if you're a birder or just enjoy seeing nature, um, great place to come. If you want to come see the birds, again, you're going to come to the main landfill located at 14450 Landfill Road outside of Brooksville. You're going to come up to the scale house and you're going to tell the folks in the scale house, hey, I heard you guys have this bird thing that I can go do and they'll give you directions. That sounds fantastic. Now, who would have thought, you know, that the landfill was a place to go watch right. birds? But on the other hand, eagles and a lot of the other birds, what are they? <laughs> They're scavengers. You've got a major buffet for them there. And I know the, bull the, uh, yeah, the eagles are a bit of bullies too because those gulls that you mentioned, I've seen them, the gulls do all the work and when they get something good, the eagles take it from them. <laughs> the, the, the eagles are opportunistic feeders. Um, a, a buzzard won't eat anything that's already dead. A hawk won't eat anything it hasn't killed. Um, an eagle will flip a coin. It can either steal food from the gull or it can eat the gull. And, and that's just <laughs> the way things work. Um, and, and we do, you're absolutely right, Lily. We've got a, a bird smorgasbord. We've got snakes and field mice and rats and, and a lot of other things. So again, winter time, great time to come up here and, and get an opportunity to see those majestic birds. And uh, that's an adult pair that you have there. The adolescents, the teenagers, uh, about 10 weeks after they hatch, uh, they're just kind of a, a brown, a mixed brown color. It takes them three to five years to get that white head and the white tail. So you really sometimes have to look to, to figure out what it is that's there. Is it is it a buzzard? Nope, nope, it's got feathers on its head. It's it's an eagle and, and the buzzards and the gulls will typically give the eagles their space. Yes, 
And I have even my own story or my own borrowed story. As you know, um, someone I'm quite close to years ago did work at the landfill and he operated equipment right out there at the cell. And he would have stories that some of these male adult bald eagles would um, challenge the equipment. Now, if a human walked out of the equipment, they flew away. But the equipment itself, if, they, if the eagle wanted to be where the equipment was, they would kind of challenge them. And he would um, just laugh about it and say, you know, you know, let's not get into this right now. <laughs> Question six, Do, does Hernando County offer curbside recycling? We're gonna move out of the landfill and, and back into people's um, personal homes. Do you offer curbside recycling? Absolutely. Any resident in Hernando County that has Republic Service picking up their trash can get recycling bins for curbside pickup. That service is going to happen one day a week and it's address dependent. So um, any day of the week, Monday through Friday, uh, Republic has anywhere between seven to nine recycling trucks running routes uh, picking up curbside material. So what does that mean? So that's another one of those options that you can use at home. Just like when you come to visit us, we have recycling, we have hazardous waste, we have yard waste, we have trash. This is another option for you at home. Instead of putting everything in your big garbage can, you can actually put your recycling into these bins. Now you have to separate it and prepare it. And I, I think we're gonna talk about that here in just a minute, mm -hmm. but as long as you prepare it properly, which is very, very easy. You're going to set it out at the curb, just like you do your trash between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Republic's going to pick that up. Now, one of the questions I get a lot is uh, the comment that, well, Republic Services is making a lot of money off of our recycling. When it comes to Hernando County and our contractor, Republic Services, they're just a taxi cab. They're just an Uber or a Lyft to get your recycling from your house to me. So all they're doing is stopping, picking it up, and bringing it here. So again, two-bin recycling program, a little different than most places. You're going to put a cardboard and paper in one bin. You're going to put aluminum cans, tin cans, and rigid plastic bottles in the other container. Republic's going to pick them up, and they're going to bring it up here. Does it cost extra? to have that? It, it, and that's a fantastic question. It does not cost you anything extra. As long as Republic Services is picking up your trash, you've never asked for recycling bins before, or maybe you have an old set from our old contractor, you'll get a set of bins, a blue and a green, and they'll come pick it up once a week. There is no added cost. It's, it's, a, it's a package deal. Twice a week garbage, once a week yard waste, once a week recycling. So I encourage everybody, go ahead and take advantage of it. You're paying for it. Mm -hmm. So you kind of touched on um, what each bin, um, you should put in each bin and it doesn't matter which you decide which one is the cardboard and paper one and which one is the other products, right? It doesn't matter green or blue. So one of the things that is in the early stages of changing in our program, we're actually going to print the list of materials on the bins. Okay. So we are going to pick a color for paper and cardboard. We are going to pick a color for plastic, aluminum, and tin. But it'll say right on the bin what we'd like in it. So what do you do? A lot of people come from places other than here where they had what's called single stream recycling. They had a large cart, like the one that's over my right shoulder. Um, that's a little smaller size, but they had a cart and all the recycling went into it. Didn't matter what it was. Our program's a little bit different. In one of the containers, you're gonna put paper and cardboard. So things like newspapers, office paper, junk mail, catalogs, cereal boxes, soda boxes, corrugated boxes. You get your, your favorite, uh, tea, hot tea beverage delivered from Amazon may come in a cardboard box. You're going to break that cardboard box down 
as long as it's less than 36 inches wide by 36 inches high, you're just gonna fold it and set it right into your recycling bin and that's ready for pickup. So you've got paper, cardboard, cereal boxes, soda boxes, and regular cardboard, corrugated cardboard in there. That bin's ready for pickup. In the other bin, you're gonna put aluminum cans uh, like we get with soda, maybe an adult beverage, a juice, a juice, a can of juice or something like that. You're gonna put tin cans, things that soup comes in or corn, green beans, pineapple, cat food, dog food. You're gonna put tin cans in there. Um, the, the technical or industry name for them is bimetal cans. We all call them tin cans. Um, and then we're gonna collect, yeah, yeah. I, I, I have to switch back and forth between the, the industry names and what we're all used to call them. Sometimes I get confused. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're gonna put rigid plastic containers, water bottles, soda bottles, milk bottles, orange juice bottles, um, salad dressing, olive oil. You can even do your laundry detergent, shampoo and things like that. We do ask for the containers, okay? The aluminum cans, the tin cans and the rigid plastic containers that you do rinse them out. They don't have to be pristine clean, but you know we'd like the big chunks of stuff out of them. We also ask that if you send us any type of a chemical, whether that's a laundry detergent or anything, you know, maybe you've got some muriatic acid for your pool or uh, maybe some type of fertilizer to spray your yard with, although we'd rather see you use compost. Um, we do ask that you triple wash the container or triple rinse it, okay? This way we prevent any type of chemical reaction from going on in our recycling area. Um, and it just kind of keeps us, it's, it's thinking about the folks here that have to process and move the material. But that's, that's it. Now that list of material, along with set out information for your trash, yard waste and recycling, is also available on the county website, www.hernandocounty.us. If you go to the solid waste tab, so under uh, departments, you go to solid waste and recycling, you'll see we have a brochure. You can click on that brochure, or at the end of this, uh, you'll have my contact information. Folks can uh, call or email me, leave me a message, and go, hey, Carmen, I'd love to get one of those. Can you send one to me? Just leave me your name and address. Sounds great. So what is this bale I'm looking at? I know I took this picture, but can, can you explain what it is that we're looking at here and how you um, prepare the recycled material for market? So what's going to happen is when we collect the recycled material, the Republic truck that's on your street actually has two compartments in it. So you've separated the material and Republic will continue to keep it separate. It comes here to me and we have two separate piles that it goes into. We're gonna send it to a processor and that processor is gonna break those two different categories of material uh, apart. So in the paper and cardboard pile, they're gonna take the cardboard out and the paper is gonna to go to, to a different place and the cardboard is gonna to go to a different place. In the aluminum cans, tin cans, and rigid plastic containers, there's about seven different materials they're gonna sort that out into. So once they've done that, once they've taken apart what we put together, now we have to efficiently get it to market. And what you've got a picture of there is a bale of what's called three through seven plastic. I believe those are things like detergent bottles, okay? So if we leave it loose, we don't get a lot of material on a tractor trailer. We basically get in, in a regular uh, box tractor trailer, we'd maybe get two and a half or three tons of material. When we go ahead and bail it like that, we can get 40,000 pounds of material, depending upon the material in the size trailer. So that's a much more efficient way of sending the material that we collect to the people that are actually gonna turn it back into a new product. Just uh, 
to the left of that, I believe those are water, water bottles or a PET plastic that you see there. And it's the same thing. We put it into a bale, we wrap wires around it. So it's more efficient to move around once you get it away from the collection side of the process. Now we're going to go to turning it into new products for the uh, plastic detergent bottles and things like that. One of the biggest markets for it right now is going to be plastic lumber. We're seeing that used more and more for docks and playgrounds and backyards. And then for the, the ever famous uh, water bottle, we're going to see that turned into a polyester, which may become a uh, carpet or even your favorite t-shirt or a uh, button down shirt, maybe your favorite polo shirt. So there's a life for the a life after the recycling program, and there's a need for that material. So we're going to collect it. Um, that process is a little more efficient by Republic picking it up instead of everybody bringing the material here to the landfill. Republic's going to bring it in their route trucks to us. We're going to load it into over the road trucks. We're going to go to our processor, which uh, is in Ocala. They're going to separate it into uh, about nine different material types between the two bins. And then each one of those material types will get loaded on a truck and sent to a mill. Uh, right now, there are no mills, uh, as far as I know, that are taking uh, plastics in Florida. There are some folks doing things with paper, making egg crates and uh, insulation. But in the Southeast United States, we see facilities that are doing aluminum, tin, plastics, paper, cardboard, the, the whole uh, gambit of material we're going to collect. So it doesn't have to go very far, but we still have to make it more efficient to get there. Okay, so my next question is, what type of items are not collected in Hernando County for recycling? There's the big one that you are always asked about, and I'll right. let you answer that and why, and then um, kind of um, explain or define what wish cycling is and how that is detrimental to your program. Absolutely. So the biggest material that I get a question about that is not part of the Hernando County Recycling Program is glass. I want to show my age. About 40 years ago when I started working 40, hang on a second. 44 years ago, when I started working in a grocery store in Citrus County, my job when I first showed up to work after school was to sort returnable, uh, return soda bottles and beer bottles mm -hmm. so that the vendors could take them back, wash them, refill them, and send them back. So for 44 years, I've been recycling glass in one way or another. Well, what's happened is as less and less products are packaged in glass, we're seeing less of a demand for glass. Now, the markets do want it, but the issue becomes the price they're willing to pay does not cover the cost to get the material to those companies. So what we've had to do, and it happened about two years ago, uh, it'll be two years ago in February, we discontinued recycling glass here in Hernando County. People ask me all the time or tell me all the time, oh, that's horrible for the environment. How could you, you're just not green. Well, I'm, I'm actually Kermit in disguise. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, really, I'm, I'm really green and it's tough it's being green. It's not easy being green. <laughs> it's easy being green, absolutely. Um, what we find is with the economics of glass that we've kind of discussed and the fact that when you put glass in a landfill, it may never break down, but that's okay because it's only going to continue to break and turn back into sand. And putting sand in a landfill is not a problem. It compacts well. It doesn't cause any air or litter issues. When we talk about air issues, it doesn't ca cause odor or pollution issues. It's not a threat to groundwater, which is something if I put my landfill hat back on, we're very, very key on ensuring that we don't. So of all the things we can put in a landfill, glass is the most inert material there, meaning it does nothing but just break back into silica or sand. So 
although I would love to say we collect glass, it's part of our program, it's not. But for those folks that are really, really concerned, and again, like me, have been doing it for a number of years, um, of the options that are in front of us, when we look at global warming, greenhouse gases, and some things like that, although there are markets for glass, we're just too far away from them. So that's, that's the real big one. Um, the, other, the other big item that we still see in our recycling program, and I'd, I'd love to say that we don't anymore. I just happen to have an example of one right here. I'm gonna try not to show the vendor or the company, but yeah. the plastic mm -hmm. grocery bag or uh, what's called the t-shirt bag. So what can we do with these? We really don't wanna see these in our recycling bins because we don't collect, nor does our processor collect enough to ship material out on a regular basis. What we'd like to see with these is we'd like to see them go back to your local grocery store, your local big box store that collects them. And what they're going to do is they're going to backhaul them to their warehouse where they are servicing 100 or so stores. And then within about a month, they're going to have enough material to send it to market or have somebody come pick it up. So it's really way more efficient to do this at your local grocery store than it is in our program, because in our program, we're going to call it contamination, just like the glass that we get now, because we don't have market for it. The other thing I'd like to really encourage folks to do is use reusable shopping bags. Mm -hmm. um, in my pickup truck and in my wife's F SUV, we've got a couple of insulated shopping bags, reusable shopping bags, and some regular shopping bags, so that when we go into the store, Got to remember to do it. Yes, grab them out of the back. Seat, grab the hat. <laughs> yes. Now, the other, the other thing that I can recommend to folks, and I do this sometimes also, if I don't have my reusable bags with me, I'll ask for them to use paper. Why? Because you can put a paper grocery bag into your paper recycling bin so that the material will get recycled in our program. Okay. So the two big things are gonna be glass and plastic shopping bags. Some of the other things that I have personally seen in our recycling program are car parts. We don't want car parts. Yup, they're plastic, yup, they're metal, but it's a different type of commodity, okay? So let's try and keep car parts out. We don't want plastic golf shoes. I actually had a, a, a resident who tried to tell me, but they're plastic, they're recyclable. There are about four different kinds of plastic and our system is designed to very easily sort that out. So someone in our processor would have to take all the different parts of the golf shoe apart and put it into the right pile. It's not what that system is designed to do. They're moving uh, about 15 tons an hour through there, okay? Um, one yeah, so of the other things that about, I've seen, Yeah, when you talk about wish cycling, well, if they don't recycle this, they should. Right, does, that, right. does us putting something in there make you recycle it? <laughs> or what does what happens generally? It, it becomes it becomes contamination and it's with an extra step because it was collected as recycling, it has to be uh, sorted out of the recycling, and then it has to go to the landfill. So the really, really important thing to do is. Take a look at the brochure online, request one, I'll send you one. Or if you come to any of our classes, I always have some with me. Take a look at that brochure, take a look at the material list. So online or in print, it's pretty simple, but that's what our system is geared for. Um, it's not geared for bowling balls. Talk to a recycling coordinator here in Florida. They collected four tons of bowling balls in a year. He had no idea. It was a larger metropolitan area but four tons of bowling balls. That's wish cycling because there's nowhere in our recycling program that you can do that. Now, bowling balls make really cool yard art. I've seen them turned into ants and ladybugs, but again, it's not gonna be anything that we do here. So I'm gonna ask folks to recycle and recycle often. But the big thing is 
recycle right and recycle what your program does. Now, if anybody's uh, watching our presentation and they're in the city of Brooksville, your list is a little bit different and the city of Brooksville does single stream recycling because this is gonna be out on the World Wide Web. We might have people from uh, Seattle, Washington watching us. Check with your local recycler to see what the program is. Okay. So we've talked all that about recycling. What if <laughs> my recycling is not being picked up? It's been longer than that 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., which I did catch that, that you said, you know, to wait that period of time, or it's been several days and they're not coming to pick it up, or what if I want the recycling that you're talking about and I keep calling and they're never delivered? What should I do then? Okay. So again, uh, we talked about the county website for the brochure, www.hernandocounty.us. You're going to go to solid waste. Okay. So on the homepage, you'll see departments, solid waste and recycling. Click on that. It's going to take you to our homepage. On our homepage, you're going to see a button that you have uh, right there on your presentation that says missed pickups. Okay. You're going to report a missed pickup. You're going to click on it and it's going to ask you what kind of material wasn't picked up yard waste, recycling, trash, or a bulk item. You're going to click which one. You're going to leave your address and there's also a place for notes. Now, We've been doing this uh, for about 18 months now, maybe a little bit longer. We've been utilizing uh, our website to collect information. Here are some of the things that I've learned that may not be amiss. You put it out on the wrong day. You had the wrong material in your recycling bins. So your driver is supposed to tag it so that you know you had the wrong material in there, okay? Maybe you had something that was too big. You finally got that 80 inch TV. You were really excited. You took it out of the box. You carried the box right to the curb, okay? That 80 inch TV box, although it's corrugated cardboard, is not gonna be able to be picked up without being cut down to 36 by 36 and folded to fit into the bin. So those are some things that are very, very important. The other thing is you're used to seeing the truck go by at 12 o'clock every day. So you get up at about eight, have your breakfast, a cup of coffee, watch the news. You put your recycling out about 1130 and they pick it up every week without a problem. You go out after your afternoon soap opera, you bring your bins back. One week you go out there at 1130, you put your bin out at six o'clock in the evening, your bin is still there. It might have changed your route. Your route may be starting earlier, okay? So you really want to get your material out at 6 a.m. or the night before, okay? And then uh, we want to make sure you have service. I've, I've seen that happen. Um, Republic should see them, should pick them up. But if you're the only person recycling on your street, they may not know to go down it. So we need to make sure that they know that you're a recycler and that missed ticket will help us determine that. Um, so that's, that's all the things. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. on the right day, you get missed. So at 6.30 that day, you can go ahead and fill out that missed report. Um, typically the trucks are done and here to the landfill before 4.30 and headed back to Hudson, okay? Occasionally they run late, so you'll just get an email or a phone call from Republic letting you know what was going on. The other big thing is bad weather, not typically the rain that we've had the last few days, but when we do have a declared hurricane and we're expecting landfill in the Hernando County area, you know, maybe somewhere along the Gulf Coast between here and Tampa Bay, between here and Apalachicola that's going to affect Hernando County, the Board of County Commissioners may shut down county operations for the day. Well, if we close the landfill, the public services isn't allowed to pick up trash or recycling yard waste because they don't have any place to bring it. So we really need to be cognizant of that. It doesn't happen very often. Um, 
I think it happened once this once last year. It's happened once this year. Okay, so there's not going to be pickup if the county is closed. There will be no no pickup. Also, if that happens, if Republic Services could not pick up your recycling because we were closed, you'll need to hold your material until your next scheduled pickup. So let's say that we were closed today and you were a Thursday recycler, you would hold your material until next Thursday, okay? Republic is not going to come out on Saturday to pick that up or shift day or anything like that. And that is particular to Hernando County. So if you look on the Republic Services National website, they may say something like that. Well, if we miss you, we'll come back the next day. That is not the case when we talk about that sort of item right there where we were closed and they couldn't do anything. Please excuse me. Um, and, and those are the big ones, but if you prepare your material properly, like we talked about, get it out at about six in the morning, Republic is gonna pick it up. They'll leave you two empty bins to bring back and you can start the process over again. What if, you, what if you generate more material than those two bins can handle? Then what I suggest to people is you can go out and purchase uh, something like a laundry basket that's about 20 gallons in size. So it's a plastic bin, kind of looks like what Republic Services furnishes, same size, same capacity, like style, like material, and you can have now three bins of recycling. So maybe you have uh, one bin of paper, two bins of plastic, aluminum, and tin. Not a problem. Republic will set out everything that is prepared properly. Okay. Okay. And then, so, uh -huh, go ahead. If you don't have bins um, and you need to get bins, again, on our website, www.hernandocounty.us, solid waste and recycling. You can request a set of recycling bins. You'll fill out, um, it's about five things. It asks you if you have service currently from Republic. It'll ask you for a name, an address, an email, and a phone. And you only have to give one or the other. You just, whichever one you don't give, you just put NA in the box. If you have a problem filling out any of these forms online, here's, here's one of the secrets. If you live on a street, use the initial for street, S-T. You don't have to spell street all the way out. Now, if you're a new resident to the county and they just finished building your house and you just moved into it, it may take a week or two for the rest of the world to find out that your brand new address is one that exists, okay? So have a little patience. If you continue to have a problem putting in the missed service or request for bins, absolutely keep my contact information. Give me a call. We'll help you work through it here. Okay, that sounds great. Now our last question. This is a little bit loaded of a question because, um, well, we know how the World Wide Web is and everyone gets to express their opinions. Everyone gets to write articles, even in um, you know local media sources. Um, People can run across articles, which seems to paint a picture of doom and gloom as far as the future of recycling. So what do you see? You, you are, you know, you are working in it. You've been working in it for many, many, many years. I didn't mean that many, many. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you see as the future of recycling? So um, what I always tell folks is, that recycling is what's called a cyclical market. It means just like the stock market, gold, um, orange juice futures, it has ups and downs. And if we're just doing it for the monetary value of the material, then sometimes it's difficult to recycle. Uh, if we go back about two years ago, a mixed ton, that's 2,000 pounds, of our recycling might have been worth about $65.50 to $70. We'll say $65. We fast forward to today, and that same ton of material 
can be worth upwards to $180, $190 a ton. Now, people are going, well, if it's worth something, why aren't we selling it? Because two years ago, it wasn't worth the amount of money it took to process it into the different categories of material. So what I see going forward is people recycling right and recycling often. Um, DEP is our Florida Department of Environmental Protection is really big on that. So what that means is as we put the right materials in our recycling bins, whether it's dual stream or single stream, whether it's curbside or at a drop-off location, by putting the right material in the bins, we're gonna lower the cost of actually processing it. Because as we put the wrong thing in the bin, remember we talked about the bowling ball, two things happen with that bowling ball. Number one, someone has to get it out of the system because the system isn't, isn't built to handle something as uh, obscure as a bowling ball. The other issue becomes is that bowling ball can damage the equipment that's sorting all of this out into the different categories. Now, there are some, there are people that work in the industry. There are machines, screens, and magnets, and air currents, and things like that. And we're seeing more robots in the program. So by putting the right materials in, just what's on that list, we're going to help to keep costs down. We can also close the loop. And as we recycle more material, we can buy more products that come to us in recycled containers. Okay. Same thing with the reusable shopping bags. Okay. If I go to a grocery store like Aldi's, I'll pick on them. We have one here in Hernando County, or I'll mention them. I'll give them a little shout out. You bring your own bags to Aldi's, they don't have bags. Okay because they're trying to keep their costs down. If you go to, uh, I'll give a shout out to the local Publix where shopping is a pleasure, and you tell them that you have your own bags, they'll be more than happy to fill them up for you. So just like using your own shopping bags, so now the vendor has to buy, the grocery store has to buy less bags, so that's a cost saving for them. When we buy material in recycled containers that have recycled content to them, that tells the manufacturer, hey, this is a really good idea. We need to put more products in these containers so that we can sell more of it, okay? And then um, there are even some more grocery stores, uh, Earth, I believe it's called Earthwise, Earth Fair. Um, there's a couple of them in the Tampa Bay area. There's one up in Ocala where you can buy bulk olive oil and honey. So you bring your own container and they sell it by the pound and you fill your container up and you get to the cash register, you got a little ticket on it as to what it was and they'll ring you up. And then of course, you know, uh, we've kind of gone back to this. If we look at early American history, when folks made their own mead or ale, you know, you made it in your own containers. Well, we can go to um, one of our local stores that sells adult beverages. We'll, we'll give a shout out to ABC Liquors. And you can actually get what's called a growler of cider or beer. So what does that do for me? I think they're even putting wine in those. Um, it cuts down the cost of the container and we're recycling by bringing our own container back. Now you actually trade your container in in that case and they wash it, give you a clean one. But there's a cost savings to it because washing a reused container is a whole lot less than having to buy a whole new container. So as far as the future goes, if we recycle the right materials, if we follow what our program says, and if we show manufacturers that there is a demand for recycled content, I see the industry continuing to grow. The other thing that we're seeing right now is as just kind of an added note, market prices are moving high because the recycling market kind of follows uh, crude oil prices. So as we see the price of crude oil is, is moving upward, now more manufacturers are thinking, well, instead of buying uh, pulp paper, I'll buy recycled paper and pulp it myself and turn it back into new material because it's cheaper 
than buying the virgin material because mining or timber operations are very, very expensive. So again, recycle the right thing, recycle them often, buy recycled content. And then of course, you can kind of watch the market to see what's going on. I see us as a community continuing to recycle because it's part of what we call our integrated solid waste management program. Yes, we can take everything that's generated here in Hernando County and we could put it in a landfill. And that landfill would fill up in about half or even a third the time that it was designed for. We'd have to build another landfill. Building landfills are very, very expensive. So by recycling, okay, by bringing out every thousand pounds of recycling that we take out of the garbage is another cubic yard of what we call airspace. And that's the commodity that we deal in. If you talk to a car dealer, they deal in cars. If you talk to um, somebody who sells greeting cards, they deal in the number of greeting cards that they sell a year. We don't deal in cubic yards of airspace. So we know how big our landfill is and based on current generation, that's how we figure out how long it's gonna last. As more people move into our county, our landfill use is gonna come down a little bit. So by recycling more, we can get a little bit more of that time back, okay? So as a future, I see us moving in some really great directions. I see people recycling more. Um, I talked to a company about a month ago that's looking to come to Florida as a state-of-the-art plastic recycler, and I hope to see them here in Hernando County. Um, we've turned it over to our Department of Economic Development and, and the director there, and I'm hoping that they'll come see Hernando County and come here and be part of our local economy, but even having them in the Tampa Bay region would be phenomenal for plastic recycling. So I see things are bright, but we have to be aware and we, we really have to be um, vested in what we're doing. Okay, thank you very much, Carmen. And I do like that idea of closing the loop and being vested because I think many of us who recycle, um, we get in the habit of recycling to kind of appease our guilt, you know, for using that much plastic, but um, we have to be part of the solution. And part of the solution is like you said, closing that loop purchasing the product that comes, the products that come from that recycled material. And again, maybe not using um, as much single use plastic, that, that's another place to start, you know, don't generate as much as well. Be mindful, use those, um, the cloth or the canvas bags, the reusable bags that you provide, we provide. I'm guilty of not remembering to bring them in, you know, so don't beat yourself up so much for that. Bring that pla your plastic bags in, shove them back, you know, in the bins outside of the grocery store, but then make an effort to remember not to have to utilize them. And it's good to know that doom and gloom is not true, that as long as we all participate and do it correctly, there should be successful recycling far into the future. And saving that airspace in that landfill saves us all money because who are the ones going to pay for that land, new landfill? All of Absolutely. us taxpayers, yes. Absolutely. So, and, and here's, we'll, we'll tie it lastly back to the sustainability thing that you and I do. If we talk about kayaking down the Wikiwachi River, if we talk about the Rainbow River, which is just north of us, it's Tuckney, uh, just north of us. These are magnitude one springs. These are, they're pumping out millions of gallons a day. And I'm going to, you know, kind of butt my way into, into your side of the, the industry. When we look at those rivers, um, they've done it on the, the Rainbow, they've done it on the it's Tuckney, and they're doing it here on the Wiki Wachi now you can't bring single use plastic items. You have to bring reusable containers for your water, whatever the case may be. And, and the same with your food. So just you know, think about this, if it's a great idea for the Itch Tuckney, what kind of idea is it for me? And, and we could get into the conversation about microplastics and deforestation and, and some things like that. Um, 
don't listen to all the doom and gloom. There's some great science out there. If you have questions, ask your local program. 90% um, of what we, re we collect for recycling winds up going to a mill. And, and that's, that's really phenomenal. Um, I'd like to see the number higher, but I'm really happy with 90%. Yes, that is, and the ten percent is because either um, it's been contaminated, like maybe they left some of that oil that you asked to triple wash out, or it's contaminated by bowling balls <laughs> or something that does not belong there. So, all right, and here is Carmen's um, contact information. This is the main um, phone number: three five two seven five four. 4112 to the Hernando County Landfill. Just ask for Carmen. They'll be glad to transfer you over. Um, and his email, which is probably the best way to reach either one Absolutely. of us, is cbruno at hernandocounty.us. Again, I'm Lily Browning. If you would like to talk to me, here's my phone number, 352-540-6230. And my email is lilyb at hernandocounty.us. Thank you very much, Carmen, for enlightening us today on um, the state of the recycling. <laughs> and it, I guess we should say recycling continues because that's <laughs> you, that circle's still going around. So we're not ready to give it up. And thank recycle you. Recycle right, recycle often. All right. Thank you very much for joining us today.